Do you remember the first time dual wielders dived onto your favourite pikemen and massacred them? Or that time a couple of brutes bashed your treasured infantry squad to a pulp? Or the time a couple of brute archers slaughtered your entire A-team? Because I do. After playing multiple playthroughs of Bad North, I have learned a range of tactics, tips and tricks that I use to save me from throwing my computer out the window. I'm hopeful these tips will help you too. This is 21 tips to beat Bad North and make sure you look out for the bonus tip at the end of the video. When a boat unloads its troops, there's a momentary one second pause before they leave the boat. Use this pause to time your attacks. This is particularly useful when timing attacks like the plunging attack, you can even count in your head. One and go. Think about which items suit which soldier type. For example, the Ring of Command is most effective on your archers. So if you don't know what it does, level 1 Ring of Command increases your unit size from 9 to 12, and when you upgrade it to level 2, it increases the unit size to 16, so you've got this huge unit. And you can use your Ring of Command on your pikemen or on your infantry, and it will make them stronger. They will definitely be better. However, the payoff, putting it on them rather than the archers, is not nearly as strong. So the pikemen with Ring of Command, they rarely get to use the extra men, because the extra men stand at the back of the formation and it's only if they lose units that they ever get to use those extra units that you get with the ring of command the infantry and um, the ring of command is great with them you get more soldiers in the unit but the negative is that they take ages to reinforce which is uh, not ideal because you often need to reinforce with your infantry meanwhile archers with ring of command they turn into english longbowmen they turn the sky black in fact i struggle to think of a more devastating unit in the game as they slaughter everything in their path. The Warhammer is also best with your infantry because they're always closest to the front line whilst pikemen are suited to items like mines and the bomb. This isn't so much as a tip but a question that I get asked all the time. How do you play on the very hard difficulty? Because it doesn't appear when you first play Bad North and the answer to that question is you have to complete the game on hard to unlock very hard. Before every round, scan the map for choke points or sneaky passages. Once the fighting starts, you won't have time to do this. Sometimes it's best to learn by watching someone else. And I've done loads of series that you can watch to learn tips and tricks and learn new ways to defeat different enemy types. I've done an archer only series, a pike only, infantry only, a very hard and a three heroes playthrough. Find links to these playthroughs in the description. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more Bad North videos and like this video if you want to help our channel out. Learn your counters. Pikes counter brutes and enemy infantry. Archers counter militia and dual wielders. Infantry counter archers, huskarls and brute archers. Succeed early. Losing commanders is basically wasting coins. And there comes a point when you're just making life too difficult for yourself. Sometimes it's better just to start again and play better. I would suggest losing one or two commanders is bearable. But if I lost four or five, I would think about restarting and just playing the game better. Dual wielders will always target your troops over buildings. Use this to your advantage by lining them up for a pike charge. Every time you play through the campaign you can unlock new traits and new starting items. New starting items have an extra box around them on the map. Some traits are better than others so this can make a massive difference to the success of the campaign. Good items to start the game with are the Jebena, the Warhammer and the Bomb. Different unit types benefit from different traits. For example, uh, the archers do well with heavy weapon, that means they're able to knock shielded troops off boats with the increased knockback. Mounting and iron skin work best with infantry, who will be in the thick of the action most of the time. Sharp weapons works great for archers and they can kill brutes, but don't put it on pikes because they get less knockback. Sure-footed is great for pikes who can stand directly on the tile of a ship landing. It's also great on infantry who don't get knocked back as far from brute archers. And rousing speeches is great for infantry who need to reinforce a lot. If you're struggling to time the use of your bomb, allow the enemy to gather around a house to set it on fire, and then kaboom, no more enemy. Now this is one I got criticised for when I was playing myself, which is fair enough because it's pretty obvious when you think about it. You can actually work out how many coins there are on an island by looking at the shapes of the houses. So if you see a single square, that's worth one coin. A rectangle is worth two coins. And if you see a bigger square house, that's worth three coins. And this is a useful thing to know because you can see which island is better to go to if you have to choose between two. Um, a church also is worth noting because a church acts, acts as a checkpoint for you uh, to save your progress. 
If you get the mountain trait, it may not seem that good at first because the mountain may not seem that strong, but as you upgrade that unit, the mountain gets stronger with every upgrade, and in the end, he basically ends up as a brute. You're going to want to use this with an infantry unit so you have one really strong commander in the middle of them. Now, this one goes against my better judgement, I really like passive upgrades in games, and you kind of feel like on Bad North it'd be great to always focus on the passive upgrades by upgrading your troops uh, to the next level. But don't neglect the abilities, the skills. The abilities like Plunge, Volley and Pike Charge are the things that are going to get you out of trouble when big hordes of enemies arrive. Those are the things that you're going to have to fire off when things just get out of control and you need one big destructive attack to keep yourself alive. Try to create death zones. These are areas on the map where you can funnel the enemies into one small confined space and then use your special abilities into that space for maximum effect. So scan the island before each level, check out where you might create one of these death zones. Um, a, a slope up the middle of the map with a, a set pikemen at the top of them can be really effective to just funnel them all in and then fire a plunge attack or a volley down upon them. Now this one I've hardly ever used but I think it's worth knowing about. You can run away from an island, you can retreat. So say three of your units have been killed and you've got one unit left that you can't kill the rest of the enemies with but they're really important. Well you can retreat, you can um, send that troop into one of the boats and retreat from the island to save them. I've ne like I say I've never used this but it might be in a desperate situation something you could use. Now this is a really important tip. In particularly the early islands, you should be using minimal amount of troops on every island and you should be trying to maximise the amount of coins you get every turn. Now this can be a little risky, it's a little dangerous to send one or two troops to an island. You want to mitigate this risk by checking out what enemy you're going to have on that island and then choosing the counter. So for example, if there's an island with only archers, you can pretty safely send one infantry unit there who should be able to handle the thing. Equally, if there's an island with just brutes or just infantry, you can send a pikeman and they should be pretty solid at dealing with that island. This should all mean you're quite a long way ahead of the turn counter and you should be able to maximise the amount of coins you gather with the rest of your troops for the rest of the game and upgrade your guys to the highest level they can be. Brute archers may be the most dangerous units in the game to fight against, but bear in mind that they never burn houses down. So if you're just up against brute archers, you can send all your troops in to reinforce in the houses, and as long as it's only brute archers on the map, nothing will be burned down, and you can rinse and repeat this until you have enough men left to rush in and finish them off. In my opinion, and this is very close with the Ringer Command, but I think the Warhammer is the best item in the game. And if you can get that as a start starting item or get it early on in your run, it can make a real difference. The Warhammer, if you can get the timing right on it, will allow you to pound multiple enemies into the sea. This is great against brutes, against brute archers, against dual wielders, and against anything where there's a lot of them. The Warhammer is great. So the traits that are best in the game, the ones you want to try to unlock as a starting item and the ones you want to use on your best troops are heavy weapon, really good one, rousing speeches, iron skin, sharp weapons, energetic and sure footed. Get any of these and your troops will be amazing. On the final island, you want to create a fallback point, a, a choke point with only one way in and out. And if need be, you can fall back to that choke point and hold the line. Make sure you've got some pikemen ready so that if you're overwhelmed on that last island, and it often happens that you are overwhelmed because there's so much stuff that is chucked at you, that you just go, right, we're going to pull back. We're going to leave the houses to burn. The houses don't matter at that point. You don't need any more coins. You can't use any more coins. So just rush back to your fallback point and put all your troops in that one spot to hold the line. Now I'm sure I've missed something, I'm sure there's something that was dead obvious that I haven't mentioned there. If that's the case, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys, I'd love to hear uh, which things you think are most important to be successful at Bad North. Uh, let's help each other and make sure that we don't die a terrible, terrible death. And my final bonus tip 
When I was playing my Pikes Only playthrough, I learned a tip about how to use pikemen in a desperate situation. Sometimes you need a set of pikemen to engage enemy troops who are attacking one of your houses. There's no one else left available and who you've used up your pike charge and what do you do? Now if you're charging headlong into this enemy group, you'll be out of formation and you'll get slaughtered. Instead what you need to do is to move to a tile near to them until you draw their attention and then move back quickly. You'll want to repeat this very quickly, forward, back, forward, back. I found this to be remarkably effective and it saved my bacon multiple times. Thanks for watching.